Hello, everybody, and welcome to the January 20th Trips and Traps. I'm Andy Sterling, and as usual, joined by Eric Oneman. Five races to bring you all together in two different segments. Three races for the first segment. We'll get started on January 13th, the ninth race of Maiden Claimer for New York Red Phillies and Mares. We're going to take a look at the 11 Pronto Pronto. Yeah, Pronto Pronto's a horse that had a good setup in the race, uh, but then encountered a lot of trouble in the stretch. And, uh, you know, it's a question of how much this trouble is noted. And Pronto Pronto may have found the right field this day, and it'll depend where she shows up next time, but she should have won this race. Prano Prano is uh, basically, you know, broke with the rest of the field there. There is Prano Prano highlighted toward the outside there, and the pace will be set uh, by a, a horse that uh, does tire, and that's a long shot best decision. But, uh, you know, the horse that was sit running second most of the way, Authentic Shot, does hold on for that second spot. So, you know, the pace scenario, not so much a factor in this race, but Pronto Pronto really, um, you know, does run well here. Yeah, I, you know, you'll, you'll see as, as she's moving into, like, she'll be moving into fifth very soon, and in a good position. And, and it was, you know, first of all, and she's moving up on the outside now. Now she'll be moving into fifth. It's a seven-pound bug rider, Joe Macero. And you don't want to sit up and beat, beat up on seven-pound bug riders. Try and learn the game. And in fairness to him, he tr did the right thing up until the stretch. And he showed courage in a way in doing what he did. I think it's a situation of inexperience and making a wrong decision. And it's very easy to sit and watch races and say they should have done this, they should have done that. But these are split-second decisions. And you see as Pronto Pronto's moving up here, he's doing the right thing. He's not swinging wide. But what happens here is he, he needed to wait a little bit and he needed to swing outside because as it'll turn out, there will be a separation between the horses that are two and three to four pass off the rail. He goes inside. And in this shot, it appears that he has the room. But when we're going to show you the head-on of the stretch, there was no room whatsoever. He just rode into a blind hole. Yeah, and this is the thing with apprentices. I mean, they're learning on the job. And, uh, you know, I think if he had things to do over, he probably would have waited a little bit longer, tried to angle outside. So many of them just, you know, married to the rail. And I think it's almost by instructions, you know, to try to save ground most of the time. So you can't really blame him. You know, at least he showed some guts here trying to split horses and go inside. And there's Prano Prano highlighted uh, kind of in, be in behind those uh, front two runners there. And you see what we were talking about before. Had he just waited a little bit and gone, you know, to the outside of the horse in the blue, he would have had plenty of room to squeeze through there instead tries to go inside and things get tight on him there and he just can't ride him out. Right. There's absolutely no room for him to go through and, and, and there, you know, he's trying to get to the outside. And the other thing is, these are sort of cheaper horses and when you have horses this level, they, they're probably not going to burst through holes and have that kind of acceleration. And Prano Prano's horses should have won and maybe should have won with a very good trip. So that mitigates it a little bit. But Prano Prano against the same horses will probably win our next start. All right. Next race, we'll take a look at another maiden claimer. This one from January 14th, the uh, second race, the uh, maiden claimer for Phillies and Mares. We're going to look at the two smart women and the one night. They get uh, involved in a little bit of an incident down the back stretch with uh, the uh, horse that finishes second and is disqualified, Windy Vale. Yeah, it's a situation where, and you'll see it early, Knight breaks a little bit of stride or so slow, a quarter to a half slow. Smart woman's in a good position. Knight's ranked down the back stretch. Now, there was a disqualification of the horse that was involved in the incident, the eight horse in this race, like Windy Vale, and she comes over and you'll see what happens because Knight is ranked sort of rushing up there. Smart Woman's at a very good spot and really through no fault of her own, she ends up getting completely eliminated from this race and does re-rally and run okay to be third. Yeah, the incident's coming up here. You see Windy Vale, the eight horse in the Melnick Silk sitting third right now, going to come over and that force turns Knight into the uh, two horse in here, Smart Woman. Smart Woman really taking the worst of it. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, Knight who stayed a little bit and she's still right a little bit rank and steadying in there, but she never re really loses much ground with the steadying whereas Smart Woman was just completely taken out of the race here. I mean, lost a good four, four or five lengths, mm -hmm. in all fairness, even almost conservatively. She maybe clunks along for third, but that was an improved effort for her. Riding the inside doesn't hurt, though it was a fair track, I thought, this day. But she does run pretty well. And the way that the race unfolds, you have the uh, top two horses in here right now. At, the, at this point in the race, no one's going to get by them. And you see where, where Smart Woman is toward, just barely on the screen toward the back of the pack there. Smart Woman's actually going to pass those horses right now, running third and fourth, and get into third uh, herself here. So I thought a very good effort by Smart Woman. And we'll take a look at the uh, head-on. And I think when we, we look at the head-on, you also have to take a look at the uh, one-horse Knight coming out of the gate because you get that temporary rail situation there in the six furlongs. And I think that kind of throws Knight off a little bit and, and maybe what makes Knight a little bit ranked trying to get back into the race after uh, after this uh, little bit of a miscue here. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, Smart Woman actually just drifted. You know, these horses react so much, she just drifted a couple inches, and Knight reacts and goes a little bit off the track, there's no doubt, and that cost a real position there. But there you see Knight is moving up now to the outside, and very soon you're going to see a position. Windy Vale's all the way in the clear on the outside, and Rosie's looking over. She's obviously aware of this. I don't know if the horse just took off on her. Certainly she's not trying to do that. Now you see Knight steadying here, but you're going to see Smart Woman take up badly. Yeah, Knight's trying to avoid Windy Vale, and uh, with that happening, 
forces itself into the uh, number two or a smart woman, and that's where smart woman takes it badly. And you'll see Knight still, you know, a little bit rank in, inside there, and uh, you know, and a little bit tight, I guess, going into the turn. Yeah, the, no, no doubt, they're two horses that could easily run better. The race and set up Knight. Knight's Knight's a horse that ran okay actually in his prior start, and Knight could be dangerous in here. Smart woman took a real step forward here because I thought she was very rank in her prior start, sort of lugging in and very green, I should say, and not so much rank. Here she actually ran a much improved race. All right, one more race to bring you on the first segment here. This is January 15th, race number three, a claimer for Phillies and Mares. We're going to take a look at the uh, four horse, and that's Honest to Betsy. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, maybe I'm being accused of, of trying to make a case for a horse that I had bet on here, but I don't think that's the situation. Honest to Betsy, here, this was an odd race. She breaks on top, and this was a race where the two was a heavy favorite, might have had a big pace advantage. David Cohen took care of that with a very good rider, the one horse going there. But Honest to Betsy, who breaks so well, the rider basically, in my opinion, spent the entire race losing position. Yeah, I don't think you're wrong at all, and I don't think this is sour grapes whatsoever here. I'd be the first one to tell you, but you see where Honest to Betsy even is now, you know, still not in a bad spot, but you've already lost a, you know, a position over the five horse on the outside. It's just going to keep getting worse. Honest to Betsy going wide here, continues to be wide, continues to be taken back, while you know the top three finishers are either on the lead or down inside the uh, three-horse Silver Cup Baby gets up for second. Yeah, and you know, and, and Ramon Dominguez is riding Silver Cup Baby, and he's intentionally staying off the rail, and maybe he's doing it to put Honest to Betsy into a tougher spot, works to his advantage. But now you see Honest to Betsy going out in the four path here, so you think of where she broke in the race and where she ends up, it's just two completely different worlds. Now, she's not a bullet in the front end, so it's not as the rider was going to be battling it out head and head, but, you know, sometimes you're supposed to go forward and then find out where it settles from there. Maybe if she had gone forward a little bit, the field might have separated a little bit more and she wouldn't end up in this spot. And the truth is, the race was won by an inside speed, it was an inside race with Ramon ending up on the fence, and she was in the wrong spot in the wrong place the entire running. Couldn't agree with you more here, and I thought, uh, you know, like you said before, an excellent ride by David Cohn, realizing that Motor City Mama might have been the lowest yeah. speed in there. He just sent Super Slash up there, and, uh, you know, a horse that we, most of us figured would come from off the pace Agreed. was right up there on the lead. Right. I thought of anything of my compromiser chances, but, but that was a very uh, uh, smart ride. And, and the thing about Honest Betsy, this is the first time for a claimer, and I think she has kind of muddied up form, and I've always thought she had some ability. I'm not sure where she shows up in this field. This was a very tough sort of optional claiming race, but she takes a little bit of a drop in class. She's going to win her next race, in my opinion. All right, well, that'll do it for us here on the first segment of Trips and Traps. Keep in mind the viewer email address is tripsandtraps at naira.inc.com. Yeah, we love to hear your thoughts, so keep them coming. And we'll be right back with the second segment.